Hey, while you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like, and subscribe. Shalom, most high in Christ blessed. This is Officer Simakaya. We're going to do a quick class dealing with slothfulness. Slothfulness. We're going to start out Proverbs 21, verse 25. The problems of a slothful spirit. Qualities of a slothful, of a slothful spirit. Proverbs chapter 21, 25. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. So one of the, the bad qualities of a, having a slothful spirit is that you have desires. You, you desire to be successful. You desire to have that good job. But it says the desire of the slothful killeth him, or the desire of the slothful kills his dreams. Because the slothful man, you want, you want to have that house. You want to go get you a house and get out the apartment. You want to get you a better job and stop working at uh, McDonald's or stuff like that. But because you're slothful, you won't, you won't take the necessary steps to actually do what you actually desire, to get what you desire, to get your desires, because your slothfulness stops you. You always make an excuse to, to not achieve your dreams or why you can't do those things. So it says, the desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. Meaning you, you refuse to do the necessary work to accomplish your desires. That's a slothful spirit. That's a trait of a slothful person. He won't lift his finger to actually accomplish the things that he would like to do. Go to Proverbs chapter 19 and 20, uh, 15. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 15. Slothfulness Cast it into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. So here we, this is another characteristic of slothfulness. It says, slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep. Well, if you're in a deep sleep, uh, I don't know if you ever had you growing up, you had a free, uh, I know uh, this just popped in my mind. Uh, we used to uh, play, play this game. We was a little small. We had, it was a game. Whoever went to sleep first. You, 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 no. thumbs. Up. I don't know about that. I, I ain't never heard of that. I ain't never heard of that. That's 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 new age stuff. I ain't never heard of that. It's probably the same thing, but I don't know. But you, you if you fall asleep first, they put uh put lotion in they your prank. hand, prank all type of pranks, mustard in your hand, and then use a feather to uh, tickle your nose, and then you smack yourself. But you don't even realize that's what you did. That's when you when you're in a deep sleep. You, or you, you have no consciousness what's going on. Some people are very hard to wake up in the morning. They get, in the morning, you try to wake them up. You got to damn near throw a, a, a bottle, of, a, a cup of ice cold water on their face to wake them up. Mm. But it says slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, meaning you so, you're, you're so immovable that no matter what anybody does, nobody, no matter what somebody, anybody says to you, no matter what, you're unmotivated. You won't get things done. You won't get up to accomplish nothing. You're in a deep sleep. You wake up. <clears throat> you might get out the bed and go get on the couch, but you turn on the TV, and you're sitting watching TV all day, all night. You won't move while you're sitting there. You're sitting there. You open, open your Bible or open up a book, and you fall right to sleep. You never actually do anything. It says, slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. Why would you suffer hunger? Because you never do anything to prepare. Right. You never do anything to accomplish anything. You're too lazy to save your money. You're too lazy to uh, go to the store and stock up goods. You're too lazy to do anything. So you're going to suffer hunger. When things are not available because you, because you were lazy, because you didn't want to get up and actually do something to prepare, you, you're just going to be always be behind. That's what I said. Anybody that's in a deep sleep, they're not going to get anything done. Right. So that's, that's, what they, what, that's what a slothful spirit is comparative to, somebody that's in a deep sleep. Uh, somebody that's in a deep sleep is not productive. Go to Pro Proverbs 26 and verse 13. That's right. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 13. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 13. The slothful man saith. There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. So the slothful man, what this is, a slothful man always has an excuse of why 
he can't do something. A, a slothful man, you know, hey, it's too cold. I can't go out there. It's too cold. I just, I just can't go out there. It's too cold. Ah, you know what? No, nah, it's too hot. Nah, it's too hot. I just can't. I just can't go out there and get no job. It's too hot. It's too unbearable for me. And they nah. be the best excuses too. They be it, it, like some compelling right excuses. Make you make you make you want to believe it. Or you know what? It's raining too hard out. I can't. I can't. I can't get up and go out. I can't leave the house because it's raining. I can't go cut the grass because it's raining. I can't go cut the grass because it's too hot. I can't do this. I can't do that. It's always an excuse of why they can't do nothing. They never make an excuse of how to get something done. There's always an excuse of how they can, how they can't get accomplish things. Wow. Read on. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. So the slothful man will not move to get nothing done. Like a door, a door that's on his hinges, that door ain't doing nothing but opening and closing. Opening and closing. It's, it only got two movements. It's going to open, it's going to swing open, and it's going to swing closed. That's the same movement of a slothful man. A slothful man, is, he, he may write down goals and dreams and aspirations, but he's never going to lift it. He, he's never actually going to get up and make those things come to fruition. He's never going to get up and do those things because he just turn, he turn, write it down, then he turn over and do nothing. That's what, that's what a slothful man does. Read on. The slothful hides his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. So just imagine that. A slothful man, your hand is attached to your body. You put it in your bosom, and it's like, ah, oh, I don't even want to move my hand and put it back on the table. And the table is like six inches away. That's, a, that's the trait of a slothful man. A slothful man does not want to do anything. A slothful man to start a task and then won't finish it because he's looking at it. You know what? It could be a two-step task. He, he do half a step and be like, man, that's, that's going to that's a, that's gonna take a lot of energy to get to that second step. It was, a, it was hard enough just to get half a step. I don't know if I could do that. That's a slothful man. It's always a reason why you can't do something. It's always a reason why you can't finish what you started. That's the trait. That's a trait of a slothful man. Read on. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. And this goes with what you said earlier. It says a, a sluggard is wiser in his own conceit, meaning his excuse going to be so sound, so good, and he going to believe it so, so well that it's going to be better than seven men that actually have a good, valid reason of why they can't do something. Mm. His, re, his, whatever his, his conceit of why he can't do something it's going to be way bigger, way bigger than it. seven men, seven men that actually have a valid reason why they can't accomplish a task. Right. Like a, a man can't write a paper because he ain't got no hands. Right. He got a valid reason, but a, a slugger going to have a better reason than that. And it's going to sound good. That's the, that's the ways of a slugger. He, the, the way of a, the slugger is always going to have an excuse why he cannot get something done. Go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. By much slothfulness. Pull up the definition. Did I look up the, pull up the definition of uh, slothfulness. Uh, pull up sloth. I hate definitions like that. Inclined to sloth. Right. <laughs> what, the, what that's supposed to mean? So it says, by much slothfulness, the building decayeth. Sloth. A. You, you increase that. A disinclination to action or labor. Indolence. So it says, a disinclination to action or labor. So the sl slothfulness is somebody who refused to take any action. You will not take any action. And it says by, by much slothfulness or by much inaction or inactivity, the building decayeth. So meaning when nothing is getting done, it, the building is going to decay. If you live, hey, you live in the, the cities that we live in across America, our neighborhoods, you see a, if a, once a building go abandoned, 
at years past, that house just deteriorates. The roof start caving in. The windows start falling in. Everything starts decaying, meaning the slothful, the, the slothful man, you will be able to uh, see us. You will be able to spot a slothful man because whatever he has, whatever possessions that he has, they're gonna decay. It's gonna be. It may be junky. It may be um, things that he, the things that he, the things that he does have, they um, they decay. They lose value. They 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 get worse and worse over time because the slothful man is not going to take the necessary actions to to maintain the things that he has, to do the proper maintenance, right? Even in his spirit. So that it goes even even to the depths of with us being in this truth. We're supposed to be studying day in and day out, battling uh, our various uh, whatever whatever vices or lust that you battle with. A slothful man not even gonna pick up his Bible and study the scriptures that he needs to study to get his spirit right. A slothful man gonna get up and his face gonna every time he get up, his face gonna be in the Bible sleep because he's slothful. He doesn't he doesn't his mind isn't wired to actually accomplish things. He's slothful. So when he does open the Bible to read, he don't read. He sleep. He fall asleep or go to sleep. Watch a class. Five seconds into the class, he sleep. That's the that's the traits of a slothful man. And by that, by much slothful, the building decays. Your spirit is doing decay. All the possessions that you have is going to decay because you you're not taking any action to maintain it. Read on. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. The same thing when you if you idleness of the hand, if you're not doing anything, if you're not taking steps to actually get things done, the house gonna drop through. Everything that you think to put your hands to is going to drop too. It's going to cave in. It's going it's to come to naught because you refuse to take the necessary action or progress to maintain or grow something. It's only going to digress. There's no such thing as something just staying, uh, sitting and staying stagnant. If it sits and it's not maintained or nothing is put into it, it's either going gonna, gonna to decay. So it's only two options. You're either going to maintain it and it's going to it's gonna stay good or get better, or you're not going to do anything and it's going to get worse. That's the trait of a slothful man. A slothful man, a slothful sister, everything that they possess or touch is going to decay because they're not going to do the necessary things to actually cause it to uh, get better or grow. Uh, so some so, some salute. Y'all want to add anything? Go ahead. So on that same point, we're talking about the slothful. Get Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. The characteristics of a slothful man or a slothful woman. Read that when you got it. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Read that again. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. So it says the diligent... This is somebody that's putting in effort. This is somebody that's working. It says the diligent is going to bear rule. They're going to grow. They're going to succeed. It's going to be growth in their life. They're going to be achieving the goals that they set because they're diligent. Read on. But the slothful. But shall, who? The slothful. Who? The slothful. We're talking about the slothful. Read. Shall be under tribute. But the slothful going to be under tribute. The slothful is going to owe people. The slothful is going to be in debt. The slothful is never going to have anything. Jump down to verse 27. Verse 27. The slothful man roasteth not that which he took in hunting. So now the Lord give an example. Say a man hunt. That diligent man, he's going to cook his food, but that slothful man ain't going to cook his food. He just went out there and hunted for. He going to procrastinate. Read. But the substance of a diligent man is precious. That diligent man understands the things that he owns is precious to him. Him building his spirit up, him growing, that's precious to him. But that slothful man, he don't see that as precious. That's it. Yeah, uh, if I can get Amos 6 and 1. What's going on with the spirit of the slothful is he's been sold a dream. He's been tricked. He's, he's under the impression that this place, this land is going to last forever. Um, this place ain't going to last forever. 
Read it when you got it. What's the script again? Amos chapter 6 and verse 1. We, be, we believe wholeheartedly in the American dream. We believe that if you apply certain cheat codes, you can slick your way into prosperity. But that's not how it's set up. Go ahead, read. Amos chapter 6 and verse 1. Uh-huh. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion uh-huh. and trust in the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. Read it again from the top. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. So it says woe or destruction to those who are at ease, those who have found comfort, those who are laid up. And just like the officer bought out, they're not doing anything to maintain that spiritual house. What they're doing is they're building this economy instead of building their own economy, the children of Zion, read. And trust in the mountain of Samaria. Right? They trust in America. They trust in this place. Right? Read. Which are named chief of the nation. This land, the United States of America is named chief of the nation. This is a prophecy speaking about this land that the children of Israel is in. Now, read. To whom the house of Israel came. The northern kingdom came here. The southern kingdom came here. We're here in America. Right? So it's specifically talking about us here. The children of Zion is here in comfort. He says, there's destruction waiting for you. You're too comfortable. You have to be shaken up. You have to wake up and see that this is not our rest. Right? You, you, you got sold a dream. You got tricked. And you decided that I like it here. I want to continue. I, I want my turn here. I want to own a slave. I want to own workers. I want people to do things for me. And so what happens is a lot of people late night, Doing nothing. They see these infomercials. Get rich quick. Uh, what, what's, some, what's some other infomercials that they put out there to have you uh, get rich without putting in mega work? Work while you sleep or make money while you sleep. So a Christian church, get, get $10. Say that again. Sow so your seed for your need. Sow so your seed for your need. Pyramid schemes, right? That's the easy way out. The Lord said by the sweat of your brow. You should eat your bread, meaning you got to put in work. Scriptures also tell you don't hate laborious work. You have to work. Anything that's worth maintaining is worth working for, right? I want, um, it was another scripture I wanted to bring out, Isaiah 51 and 12, and then that would be it. Isaiah 51 and 12, because we figured that we can trust this man in this land, follow him, believe in him more than we believe in our power. This is what our power told us. This is how we're going to get our comfort. We're not going to get our comfort following the, the dreams that America sold us. Read. Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 12. Read. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. You hear that? The Lord said, I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Not the white man. That's not where you get your comfort from. That's not where you find your ease at. Your comfort and your ease comes from the Lord. And he's not ready for you to actually put your feet up, kick your feet up yet. So we have no excuse for being slothful and lazy. We got work to do. Read. Who art thou, that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? Who are you to be afraid of a man that's going to die just like you? Meaning, how are you going to trust in a man that was created just like you? Instead of being afraid of the, 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 the maker, you're afraid of his creation. Shame on you. You believe in this man more than you believe in the Lord. You believe in these pyramid schemes. You believe in these get-rich-quick schemes. You believe that you can lay up, be slothful, and do nothing and just have money flowing in. You believe in not building up your temple. You believe in not bringing forth the, the kingdom of heaven which is in you. You believe in that thing. You've been tricked. It's time to wake up, right? And of the son of man, which shall be made as grass. We are nothing. We're here today and we're going tomorrow. You believe in all these different doctrines that's floating around instead of believing in our true power. That's it. Those are excellent, excellent points. Excellent points. So what we're going to go to now, what are some solutions to, to not continue to move in that slothful spirit? Some steps that we could take to actually overcome that slothful spirit, overcome that spirit that would always make excuses, not get nothing done. Go to Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Proverbs 6 and 6. Read it when you got it. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. 
Consider her ways and be wise. So the Bible gives us the blueprint. It gives us an instructional. It says, go to the ant, you sluggard. So if you, if you are lazy, you are slothful, it says, look at the ant. Observe the ways of the ant. It says, consider her ways and be wise. So it's letting you know an ant is wise. You need to watch the ant and follow after what an ant does. Read. Which having no guide, mm. overseer or ruler, provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest. So what it's telling you is the ant ain't waiting for nobody to tell it what to do. The ant is taking initiative. The ant is okay, taking stock, okay. The sun is up, it's warm out. You know what? This time to go and get food. This time to build. Let's go get this. Let's do it. And they working together in the doing it. It says they have no God or overseer or ruler. They don't have nobody saying do this. Do that. You got to get this done. You got to get that done. But the ant says, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So what trait do we get busy? Get busy. They all, when you observe the ants, they always moving. They moving in your house. If you got, if you got a, 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 a opening in your house, uh, the ants going to be in your house trying to find some food. And when you, when you find out where they coming in at or where they going, they going to wherever the source of the food at. So you have to observe that. Okay, the ants get busy when it's, when it ain't, if it ain't too cold, if it ain't rainy, the ants busy. They getting busy. They doing something. They always doing something to prepare, something to make sure they good for when the, um, when the harvest is up. That's what we have. That's what you have to do. If you got that slothful spirit, that's what you have to do. That's you got to get busy. Get busy. Go to Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. So it says he becometh poor that dealeth with the slack hand. You got to understand, if you're dealing with a slack hand, you're not doing, you're not, uh, you're not taking any precautious steps, you're not doing anything, you're going to become poor. Right. You're not going to have anything. But it says the hand of the diligent make is rich. Pull up the definition of diligent real quick. Pull up the definition of diligent. So we can see clearly what that means. Diligent, characterized by steady, earnest, and energetic effort, painstaking. So the diligent, so the, it says the diligent make, the hand of the diligent make is rich. So it says characterized by steady, meaning you always, you always making some progress. You making some progress on everything that you got going on, you making some progress. It says steady, earnest, and en energetic effort effort not meaning that you making some lackadaisical effort you uh procrastinating like oh, i'll get it later i'll get to it i'm gonna get to it when i get to it no you're making steady earnest and energetic effort meaning you actually putting your all into it you putting your might into it you mean you ain't waiting on luck nope you ain't waiting on no luck no uh lucky draw you going to play the lotto every single day because you're trying to get that ticket. No, you actually applying continual effort. When you wrote down your goals, you wrote down whatever it is you were trying to accomplish, you actually making continual effort to get them things done. That's, right. That's what the diligent man, diligent, a diligent man is making continual effort to get things done. And if you, when you roll, when you roll like that, you're going to accomplish the things that you got, that you uh, got set up. You're going to accomplish your goals. You're going to build up your spirit. You're going to build up the nation because you're making constant effort. You're never slacking back. You're making constant effort, and you're in the right spirit when you're doing it. You're not doing it like, ah, let me get this done. Ah, let me get up. Let me get up so I can get this done. No, it says steady, earnest, energetic effort. So if you got a slothful spirit and you're trying to do something grievously, you're not going to do it. It's going, that's going, that spirit is going to feed your slothfulness because you're not going to see any benefit in it. So you have, to, you have to learn how to go to Romans chapter 12. Or, oh, here you go. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. 
I, I was zooming through the scriptures now. That's okay. Romans. I, I didn't divert it. So if you got a slothful spirit, you gotta you have to trick your mind. And it's not just we're dealing with slothfulness now, but whatever your vice is, you have to trick your mind. I know uh Deacon Laba say you have to tell your mind what to do. You gotta you gotta instruct your mind. Read that. Romans chapter twelve, verse one. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living. Read verse two. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And this is verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the scriptures say, don't be conformed to this world. So being conformed to this world, you got a lot of people that, like we read earlier, it said the, the, desire, uh, the desire of the slothful, uh, killeth him because his hands refuse to labor. So when it says be not conformed to this world, don't be looking at uh, what's the home home movie home and like the, the decked out houses and all that stuff. Then reality shows that show other people's lives. You you sitting on the couch watching that stuff, wishing that you had that, but yeah, you're not you're not doing nothing to get it. But you're just sitting back watching, thinking that no, it say don't be conformed to this world. Don't be don't have your mind set on those things. Not saying that you can't, you know what I'm saying, get your money right, get you a house and things like that. But don't, don't be sitting back and have your mind set on the things, on, on keeping up with the Joneses, as That's they call it. It says, be not conformed to this world. Read. That ye may prove. Read uh, the second part again. Okay. But, ye be, but, be, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So this is what I really want. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. When you transform by the renewal of your mind, if you got a slothful spirit, you being transformed, your, your mind, you have to trick your mind. You know what? You see, let's say you got a big task at hand, something that's, that may be difficult. You got to tell yourself, this ain't that bad. It's not, it's not, this is not a hard task. This is, it's all, it's easy. It ain't that much. You have to trick your mind so that you don't get yourself in a spirit of, ah, oh, I don't really want to do this. This, this is going to be a lot. It's going to take me a long time. No, compartmentalize it. You know what? This is not going to take that much. Break the task down. Break it. If it's, if it is a big task, okay, let me do it in segments. Let me do it in portions so I'm making progress and I can see the progress and that's going to motivate you to stay steady, to stay energetic, to stay in it. Right. You got to change your thought process of how you look at tasks, how you view things that got to get done. That's how you, change, that's how you uh, build up and change that slothful spirit. You have to change how you think. You got to change how you look at things because when you're slothful, when you, you, like it's, we read in Proverbs 26, when you slothful, you always find an excuse of why you can't get something done. So now you have to, to change that spirit. Now when something, when you get, you, you're given a task, you got some, a goal, you have to look at it different. Now you have to look at it from a, uh, get a uh, real quick, Do we finish, finish that verse real quick, get Philippians after this. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Because when you change your mind, you're going to prove that this Bible is tr a true book. You're going to prove that the commandments of God are good and perfect for us to keep. Get uh, Philippians chapter... Uh, 4 and 8. This is part of you changing... The how you look at things, how you view things. Because a slothful person, everything going to be grievous. So it's going to demotivate. It's going to, uh, is that even a word, demotivate? Use me now. <laughs> it's de it's going to demotivate you from wanting to get the task done because you're going to look at everything negative about the task. You're going to look at everything negative about the goal or the dream or whatever it is that you're trying to do. You're gonna all, everything that's going to come in your mind is going to be a negative and it's going to discourage you from doing it. Read. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, 
Think on these things. So you have to change your mind. You got to change up. When you look at something, even if it is difficult, you got to look at, hey, when I finish this, it's going to look bad. When I finish this, it's going to be good. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be I'm gonna be um satisfied. You gotta look at the end result. Even like what we what we uh let me see. No, I'm gonna uh, you have to look at it from a positive perspective. You gotta look at the good about it. Whatever it is that you gonna that 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 you set out to accomplish. If it's A, I'm gonna read my four chapters a day. A slothful man look at it like four chapters a day. That's a lot. It's gonna take me like Ten minutes to read four chapters, and and they would uh, a slothful man gonna make that into a bad thing. But then you know, but to change your thought process, you know what? Four chapters, it's only gonna take me ten. It's only gonna take like ten, fifteen minutes. So I'm, I could do that. That's that's not bad. Then you end up reading eight, nine, ten chapters, and then you look at it. Okay, if I if I do it, I'm gonna I'm gonna get through the Bible in a year. You gotta look at the good things that's gonna come behind whatever it is that you're taking out. That you going that whatever endeavor it is that you that you facing that you going to to to, to accomplish you got to look at you got to pull out the good things from it so that way it'll motivate you to do it it'll motivate you to keep going it it cause you to get rid of that procrastinating spirit the slothfulness the the grievous t- turning everything into it being grievous you will actually want to do it go to uh, Ecclesiastes nine and ten. So that's that's what we have to do, as we overcome in the, the, we as we work into overcome a slothful spirit. You have to change the way you view tasks. You have to change the way you view your goals. Whatever it is that you set out to do, you have to change your mind when you're doing it. You can't look at it as a grievous thing, as a bad thing. Like the scripture said in Proverbs 26, it says, "Just to, let's read that real quick." Uh, Proverbs 26 and 13. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 13. The slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. If that ain't the most negative thing that you could say, it's a lion out there. Ain't nobody going in those streets if it's a lion out there. If you look, open your door and it's a lion standing on the street, you like, shoo, you don't close the door. So that's, that's that negative outlook. A slothful man, everything is negative, so that way it, 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 it discourages you from doing anything. Because your first thought is, ah, it's going to be hard. I, can't, I ain't going to be able to finish it. I don't want to start it because I ain't going to finish it. No, you got to change that thought process. You can't say it's a lion in the way. I mean, if, hell, even if you got that thought, you open the door, oh, it's a lion. You know what, I'm going to be like Samson and, and slay that lion, and I'm going to get this task done. You have to change your viewpoint. You got to turn everything into you being on top. That's how you're going to accomplish it. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes 9 and 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. So when you're mad, you have to, when you get a task, when, you set, when it's set for you, you got to put forth your best effort. You got to put for your best effort when you're doing it. You got to start off good and end good. That's how you're going to get rid of that slothful spirit. You you have to put forth your best effort. Because when you put forth your best effort, that's you thinking about it positively when you go out to do it. You're thinking about it positively. You're thinking about it, you know what? It's going to be a good turnout when I do this. It's going to be a good turnout when I finish this. When I finish this task, it's going to be good. It's going to be better than what it, what it was when I, before I started. Right. You got to put that in your mind. Uh, Sirach chapter 4 and verse 29. Sirach 4 and The book of Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach chapter 4, verse 29. Be not hasty in thy tongue, and in thy deeds slack and remiss. Remiss. So uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, another quality that you have to have to get rid of that slothful spirit, whatever you put out your mouth saying that you're going to do or saying that you can do, you got to stick with it and get it done. You got to stick with it. You got to, whatever your, your words, whatever words come out your mouth, you got to let your act, 
You got to let your actions back it up. Whatever you say you're going to do, it says, uh, be not hasty in your tongue and in our deeds slack and remiss. So if you're hasty in your tongue, you're going to have to be hasty in your deeds to make sure you get it done. Whatever it is that you set forth to do, you got to, you got to focus on getting it done. Um, that's all I got. Y'all got anything? Hey, and uh, the solution to deal with that spirit, go to Baruch chapter 4, verse 28. Baruch chapter 4, verse 28. So we talking about solutions to overcome that spirit. So if you started off with this spirit of slothfulness, well, you didn't do anything. Now you got to change your mindset. You got to change your actions. Baruch 4, 28. The book of Baruch chapter 4, verse 28. For it was your mind to go astray from God, so being returned. So wait, it said what? Read that again. For it was your mind to go astray from God. So remember what we talking about being slothful. So it was your mind to be slothful at first before you started changing. So if you're watching this class, this is your chance to change that thing about you if you know you're slothful. Right. So that was your mind. Be slothful, be lazy, make excuses. But now, so being returned, seek him ten times more. Repent of that thing. Now, instead of being slothful, be diligent. Put in your best effort. Don't make excuses. Don't lie to yourself. No, I can't do that. You know you could do it. <laughs> Brothers be pulling these excuses out of thin air. It'd be crazy stuff. It's too far. But they'll drive four, five neighborhoods over for something that's not that serious. But for the Lord's work, it's a ton of excuses. That's why your mind got to change. Uh, Proverbs 23, verse 7. That was on my mind while we, was, while we was going over these scriptures and talking about this. Your mind got to change. Before you do anything, it's always the thought. You defeat yourself in your mind before you do things a lot of times. If you have a thought, I ain't going to never do this, or I'm not going to accomplish this, then you're not going to do it. That's with anything. Proverbs 23, 7. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Read it again from the top. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we know our heart, according to the Bible, is our mind. Remember the quote that Bishop Yahweh have always quote. Watch your thoughts for they become actions. Watch your actions for they become habits. Watch your habits for they become your destiny. They all start from up here. So if you like, oh, that's too hard. Oh, it's too far. Oh, that's too much work. You're not going to accomplish nothing. You're going to be that slothful brother, slothful sister, never amount to anything. Right. Why? It started in your mind. Get uh, You know what? Play that video real quick. Actually, play both of them real quick. And here are the four characteristics of a lazy person according to Proverbs. Number one, the lazy don't finish what they start. Proverbs 12, 27. Number two, the lazy are all talk and no action. Proverbs 14, 23. Number three, the lazy can't get started in the morning. Proverbs 19, 15. And number four, the lazy, they don't plan or strategize. Proverbs 10 verses 4 to 5. So, which of these four describe you? Honestly, for me, I'm yeah, already. Um, Y'all got that other one? Get uh, Sirach 7 and 36 real quick. The book of Sirach, chapter 7, verse 36. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end, and thou shalt never do amiss. So, if you had a slothful spirit, this is what whatsoever thou takest in hand, meaning whatever is put in your, whatever is put, in in your in your hand to do whatever is put on your in your face whatever it is that you you set goals you set dreams you set aspirations whatever it is that you take in hand it says remember the end remember that you ain't promised tomorrow mm. remember yo you could you could go to bed tonight and not wake up right. the remember the end is you gonna die we all gonna die and we don't know when right. so and then it says and thou shalt never do a miss. You have that thought process, you ain't gonna, you, you're not going put, to keep putting stuff off day to day to day to day because then you're going to realize, you know what, 
I'm putting this off to tomorrow. I might not be here. Mm. So that 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 should help get rid of that slothful spirit. Like you know what, I got to do all I can today because I don't know if I'm gonna wake up tomorrow. I don't know if on my way home from work, I might get I might get in an accident. Mm. Something might happen where I might not make it home. I might not live to see the next day. Remember the end. We all gonna die. Go ahead. Hey, uh, all praise to the Most High. Great example. Hey, just imagine if Christ had a slothful spirit. Yeah. Imagine if Christ had a slothful spirit and he didn't do the works that he did. He didn't come and die for the nation of Israel to bring us back together. Give me uh, the book of John, chapter 5, start at verse 17. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 17. But Jesus answered them, my father worketh here too, and I work. See that? So the the father works, and guess what? The son works. We're supposed to be moving just like Christ because Christ is our example. We're supposed to, what, fashion ourselves after Christ and do like our father did. Get Ephesians 5 and 1. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Because in order for us to have this slothful mindset to get off of us, not to be conformed to that world, we have to look at the scriptures as an example, and the greatest example is our Lord and Savior. Read that. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. See that? That's what Christ did. He was a follower of God as dear children. And look what God called Christ for him being a follower of God. Get Matthew chapter 3, verse 17. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And guess what? Christ is now sitting at the right hand of the father. He's sitting at the right hand of the father because he was, he's well pleased of what his son did. He went out. He went out into the community. He healed the sick, mended the brokenhearted, and he did the ultimate price for the nation of Israel. He died for us. So just imagine if he was slothful. If he said, man, Father, there's a lion in the street. I don't feel like doing it. Or was in a deep sleep. We wouldn't be right here today. So Christ is our example that we should follow. That's all I lost. So play that uh, video. One. You spend too much time watching TV and checking social media. According to Media Kicks, the average person will spend more than five years of their life playing social media. This That's study downplay. shows that the average person spends about 35 minutes on Facebook and 40 minutes on YouTube each day. And this doesn't include other social media platforms, like Instagram or TikTok. In other words, most people spend more than an hour a day on social media. Spending too much time watching TV and social media is a clear sign of lazy people. And if you don't change it soon, it can negatively affect other areas of your life, including your future. And that's, that's what we read where it says, uh, the desire of the slothful killeth him. Meaning you, 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 you slothful, you lazy, you just sit around, you on YouTube all day, you ain't doing nothing, that's going, it's going to destroy your life because you're not going to get nothing done. Your life is not going to refl be reflective of being an a, a Israelite because you're not going to get anything done. Your spirit is not going to grow. Go ahead, play. Two, you like to put off doing work and wait until the last minute. If you just pay bills on due dates, wash clothes when they pile up, and wash dirty dishes when you run out of clean dishes, this is a sign that you are a procrastinator. That shows that you wait, you always wait till all the pressure is on you to get it done. You, you're not motivated, you lack the motivation to get things done because you know it needs to be done. You do it, you do it when it's necessary because now, like the example they use to wash dishes, now you washing because you ain't got no di you ain't got no clean dishes to use, so you ain't got no choice but to wash, or you ain't got no choice but to wash clothes because now you ain't got no more clothes to wear. 
company coming over. Now you trying to clean. Right. You ain't clean all week. The house dirty as hell. People coming over. Now you want to clean. Sloth dust. Yep. Three, you always make excuses not to exercise. You always have an excuse not to exercise. In fact, sport is one of the important activities that everyone should do. However, you miss it by giving excuses like too busy and don't have time. That's, that's going to... Four, that, uh, you don't... There's a lion in the way. It's always an excuse of why you can't do something. And they, I know they use it exercise, but that same principle goes to everything. Right. Don't plan for the future. People who do not have goals to achieve in life are lazy people. It's a sign you're not committed to your dreams and aren't serious about achieving your goals. Lazy people prefer to watch YouTube and admire how other people are living the lives they want instead of taking serious action and living their dreams. Pause it real quick. Get, uh, Proverbs 29 and 18. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse 18. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. You rolling in a slothful spirit, that's why... Look at our neighborhoods. Look at what we came out of. Look at the, 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 the neighborhoods that we, whether you still live in the neighborhoods or you moved out, look at our people. Look at, look at our nation as a whole. It says, without a vision, the people perish. That goes into slothfulness because you, you don't take the time to sit down and actually set forth some goals. Think. Think about the things that you want. Think about the things that you want to actually uh, do within the next two years, three years, four years, five years. There's no vision of people perish, read. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. But when we keep the law, we get rid of that slothful spirit, it says happy are we because we actually going to accomplish things. Like it's saying, go get Joshua 1 and 8 real quick. The book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Notice, notice, it says that we meditate in the scriptures day and night that we may observe to do. That's some action. If you slothful, you're not going to take no action. If you meditate day and night, you're not going to take the action. But when you take the action, it says... You're going to be, read on, read, did you finish it? For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and, and then thou shalt have good success. So then when you meditate on the scriptures day and night and observe to do the things that you meditate on, it says then your way going to be prosperous and you're going to have good success because you actually got off your butt and did something. Um, press play. Go back to that uh, video. It's like a minute left. Five, you didn't finish the book you read. How many books or magazines did you buy that you didn't finish? This is a sign of laziness that many people show. You know, Bill Gates reads about 50 books per year, which is broken down to one book per week. Uh, that, that last point, we, we can care less about the, the Gates guy. But are you reading your Bible? And it ain't nothing, it ain't, it actually, is, it's nothing wrong with reading uh, books, like self, the self help books and stuff like that. Because most of them books, when you actually read it, all they did was take out, take principles out of the Bible and put it in the book. But they may, when you read those books, they, it's just in a, uh, a more practical, modern. modern way that you understand easily. But all they did was take, all they did was steal, steal what the Bible say and put it in the book. 
So you doing those things is you actually uh, reframing your thought process, reframing your mind to actually move in a different spirit, move outside of that slothful spirit. You got something? Hey, go to John chapter 3 and verse 3. This is a common scripture that we know, but it also applies to what? What we're talking about right now. We have to change our minds. If we know we had that slothful spirit, we got to fix it. John 3 and 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Read it again. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. Be what? Be born again. Every time we hear born again, we automatically think, okay, repent from uh, adultery, if that's what you was, fornication, liar, cheater, thief. This go for slothfulness too. Being born again, you got to be born again in your actions, how you carry yourself, how you move. You cannot continue to be slothful and think you're going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Then Christ say the kingdom of heaven is within you, meaning we got to bring it forth. So if you slothful, you're not going to bring forth the kingdom. That's why you got to be what? Read it again. Except a man be born again. Born again. Like it's saying Romans 12 and 2. Change the renewing of your mind. Your mind got to be renewed. Read. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You won't see the kingdom of God. If you're not born again, if you're not truly changed, that's what repentance is, change. If you're not truly changed, you're not going to make it into the kingdom of God. You can't stay that way. That's it. So that concludes the class. A slow most hand, Christ bless them. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>